In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Father, that you, that you are here already. You know the needs of your children and you meet them. You have prepared the world to meet the needs of your children today. I'm asking that they will eat and be satisfied and praise your name. We thank you for the love you show us that we find favor in your side to have you talking to us always. Thank you, Father. Keep doing this for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are considering the word of God today on winning attitude in times of crisis. Winning attitude. In times of crisis or you can term it overcoming attitudes in times of crisis if you carry a light object or let me put it a ball would air in it if you carry it and throw it into the river it will not sink it will be on top of the river for reasons the air that is inside that ball is what sustains the ball on top of the river so as you see the substance sustained on top of a river of the river because of some sustaining property or properties in the object so also i am saying there are winning attitudes overcoming attitudes that if you possess them you will win over all the problems of this life you will overcome in all the situations you call them attacks, you call them sicknesses, you call them Satan, you call them witches and wizards, you call them accidents, whatever you call them, you will be on top of the water. God gave Noah specification of the ark he was to construct and that ark was made such that whatever amount of water would be on earth the ark could be on top of it it would not sing the more the water the more the volume of the water the more the height of the water the more the ark rises on top of it in fact the ark goes high as the waters increase so god has given us the bible To regulate our lives 
to guide our thoughts if you allow the bible to guide your thoughts to regulate your life if you feed yourself with the knowledge of scripture there is no trouble there's no crisis that will overcome you you overcome them all man is born into trouble there's no way you can stay free from trouble and afflictions in life let's listen to what job has to say in the book of job chapter chapter 5 verse 7 job chapter 5 verse 7 yet man is born unto trouble as the sparks fly up it is said if you pick a box of matches and pick a piece of that of of much stick from the box and strike at the body the fire will go up this happens to a to all the pieces that are inside the box of matches all the pieces of matches bring any one of them and strike at the side of the box the fire goes up so every person that is born in this world is born into trouble because the world is a troublous place it is said immediately a bird comes into the world in fact a sign that he has come healthily into the world is that he should cry to moon the trouble he has come to face if a child does not cry a bed a baby does not cry they will wait for that cry otherwise there is a conclusion that he will die and not survive it shows he has not yet come to the world he has not registered he is to cry I've come into a world of trouble yes everyone struggle all you can struggle in any way by money by righteousness or even by wickedness you will still enter into trouble job said in job chapter 3 I read verse 26 I was not in safety neither had I rest neither was I quiet yet trouble came I did all to keep from trouble but trouble still came I did all when the children had a feast he sacrificed for them in case they would sin that god should forgive them but trouble still came on the children wow we are in the world of trouble however god has assured us his children that he would deliver us from trouble and from every kind of affliction job chapter 5 verse 19 he shall deliver thee in six troubles yea in seven there shall no evil touch thee perfect the number seven is perfect in all the troubles of life if you rely on god 
if you trust and pray unto him he will deliver you nothing shall hurt you have that confidence but I want to say all of us are terrorized by troubles and afflictions from time to time troubles will come man is often terrorized even when they were with Jesus the disciples cried because of the troubles of life master do you don't care that we are perishing because trouble rose up against them in the sea when they were in the ship with Jesus they cried out so even servants of God can cry out to go in times of trouble but remember whatever trouble comes your way come back quickly to this winning attitude you will be on top of that trouble you will win whether the trouble is circumstance or human human beings that have risen against you you will find that you will overcome them Amen. terrorized by troubles and affliction trouble and afflictions come in various ways known and unknown for job it came unknown to him because he had mastered he thought he had mastered situations that troubles will not come that's why he said i was not in rest i did all i lived the righteous life i did this and i did that but trouble still came yes he didn't know the direction it came except god revealed it as we see in Job chapter 1 verse 6 from verse 6 of Job chapter 1 6 to 19 now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan came also among them and the Lord said unto Satan when comest thou then Satan answered answered the Lord and said from going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it and the Lord said unto Satan hast thou considered my servant Job that there is none like him in the earth a perfect and an upright man one that feared God and eschewed evil then Satan answered the Lord and said that Job feared God for naught hast not thou made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he had on every side thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land but put forth thine hand now and touch all that he had and he will curse thee to thy face and the Lord said unto Satan behold all that he had is in thy power only upon himself put not forth thine hand so Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord was Job aware of this? Was he aware that the Creator God and one of his creatures called Satan were contending against him? Was he aware that God boasted of him and that God was challenged by Satan over him and that God allowed satan over him to torture him he was not aware that's what he said i did all i lived all well but trouble came yes and there was a day verse 13 when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house 
And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing, and the asses feeding beside them, and the sheep and the Sabians fell upon them and took them away. Yeah, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The fire of God is fallen from heaven and had burnt up the sheep and the servants and consumed them. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was just speaking, there came also another and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon the camels and have carried them away, yeah, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house. And it fell upon the young men, and they are all dead. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his beard and fell down upon the ground and worshipped and said naked came I out of my mother's womb and naked shall I return thither the Lord gave and the Lord had taken away blessed be the name of the Lord in all this job sinned not nor charged God foolishly what does crisis intend to achieve is to make you sin against God is to turn you away from God is to remove you from the righteousness of God in you is to make you hate God but it didn't succeed in Job he had winning attitudes he had winning attitudes. If you read in this portion well, you will see him maintain winning attitude. But let's go forward to Job chapter 2. Job chapter 2 verse 2 to verse 10. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feared God and eschewed evil? And still he holdeth fast his integrity, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin. Yeah, all that a man had will he give for his life. But put forth thine hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. Why was God allowing Satan to do this? It's because God wanted Satan to know. He, God, was precious to some human beings. They so loved him that whatever suffering, whatever crisis they passed through in life, they would not forsake him. If you are thinking, Job loved me because of his property. Go and try whatever you will try. Do what you want to do over those property, but don't kill him. And Satan went and destroyed all the property, including his children. He didn't change Job. Satan, you moved me against Job, but nothing happened to him. He remained in his integrity. 
he hold it to his righteousness never to offend me it's because you didn't touch him it's other things that were affected it's because you didn't touch his body no sickness he was healthy touch his body now and let pain come upon him you will see what he will do okay go and verify what you have said satan and satan struck job with sickness can you see verse 6 and the lord said unto satan behold he is in thine hand but save his life so went satan forth from the presence of the lord and smut job with so boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown can you see the lord said to satan go do as you have said but safe is like don't kill him which means satan has power to kill somebody except god stops it if satan then has power to kill somebody and the forces of satan the forces of witchcraft have come to kill you and you are running to the witch doctor have you really escaped from death that's the question it's only god that can stop satan from doing it it's only god that can stop witches from doing it otherwise there's something greater than your death your backsliding you go and become a witch yourself go and become a sinner yourself and satan will spare your life because he will use you to destroy many people that's more than you dying and that is the negotiation sinners go to when they go to witch doctors to save their life to give them charm is that they have left god and that's higher than you dying because if you die you will go to heaven in your righteousness but now that you have backslidden heaven is closed and yet you have become a, a, a servant in the hand of satan you have become his battle axe you will spread hiv aids to a thousand you will sp you will be used to kill many you will be used to destroy the works of god which is better to satan than you're dying and going to heaven so you can see now now the lord has warned him don't kill him so satan went and struck job with boils cancerous sickness and he took him a portion to scrape himself with her and he sat down among the ashes then said his wife unto him dost thou still retain thine integrity curse god and die what a great trouble he said my body was smelling before my wife who turned away from me it was hard but have the winning attitude all these things will not throw you down all these things will not defeat you you will not backslide in christianity no see how job handled the matter yes but he said unto her thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh what shall we receive good at the hand of god and shall we not receive evil in all this did not job sin with his lips can you see in all this crisis brought by satan on job did not fall him down may god do so in your life may you be so prepared to serve the lord may you make up your mind perfectly to serve the lord to the point that nothing coming in your right hand side nothing coming in your left hand side nothing coming from your back or nothing coming from your front will turn you away from god who shall separate us from the love of god 
shall tribulation or distress or famine or peril or so I am persuaded that neither height nor depth nor principalities nor powers nor things present or things to come will be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord may God bring you to this point may your Christian life climb up to this point Yes, as a songwriter wrote, I am pressing on the upward way. New heights I am gaining every day. Still climbing as I pray, Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand on higher table land where light and joy and love abounds Lord lift me up cause me to star on the higher table land. in Jesus name Amen. as if every building on earth is tried by the rains the winds and the storms to know which one stands and which one will fall. So also, all men on earth can, will be tried to know those with winning attitude and those without the winning attitude. We saw it in Opa and Ruth Ruth had a winning attitude. She won over her crisis and the crisis of the family, the crisis of the marriage. Opa did not have a winning attitude. She returned and died and went to hell. So, look at it. Trial will come. To know of what sort you are, of what kind you are. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 to 27. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock, because the house was built with winning properties. The rock. Sound foundation proper building these are winning properties so that when the wind descended when, and when the rains descended and the floors hit at the house the wind blew to remove the roof it did not fail it was not affected because of the winning properties but look at the second house. Yes. Verse 26. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sun. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it can you see the house was built without winning properties the, it was built upon the sand and what 
the rain descended the the floor came and wind blew upon it it fell if you don't have this winning attitude crisis will remove you and i've told you already if thou faint in the days of adversity is because your strength was small it's not because of the adversity the same wind that blew on you blew on your brother the same rain that fell on you fell on your brother the same flood that hit on you hit on your brother why is he standing and you are falling is because you lack the winning attitude yes that's what you need to understand now winning attitudes the following attitudes in the troubles of life should be adopted by you in order to win over the crisis of your life and these winning attitudes how do they come they come from the heart the seat of your love The Bible tells us, from, uh, for out of the heart cometh the issues of love. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of love. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. From with from the heart with the heart so get your heart to grab this winning attitude face in thought then expressed in your action face in the thought of job then issues out in his mouth then expressed in action i give you three of these attitudes in times of crisis number one god knows about it before now everybody say it god knows about it before now say it again Say it again. God knows about this trouble in my life before now. God knows that I will have trouble today before the trouble came. God knows that what has happened now would happen before today. If you get that sunk into your heart, you will be peaceful. You will win. If you get this thought, if you can have this attitude in your life, I'm telling you, you will win. God knows that I will catch cancer before cancer came. You have defeated the power of that cancer. God knows that I will be accused by men before the accusation came. <laughs> you will be peaceful in the presence of accusation. God knows that I will have this accident before today and he knows the part of my body that shall be affected in the accident you'll be quiet you'll be quiet i'm telling you very vital winning attitude in acts of apostles chapter 15 verse 18 
Acts of Apostles, chapter 15, verse 18. It goes, Known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world. All his works. If you are part of the works of God, he knows everything about you from the beginning of the world. He said, I, I declare the end from the beginning. Just immediately you got born into the world, I know how you will end. I know the various things that will happen to you. In fact, I know where you will die. I know which people will make themselves your enemies. I know the various places you will stay in this life. I know to the sinner he may not grasp this. If he grasps it, it may not benefit him except he turns to God. But for you whose name is in the register of salvation. For you that is called by the name of the Lord. For you that God has said he will never leave you nor forsake you. This knowledge is comforting. This knowledge is peaceful, makes you peaceful. That my God knows. Huh? That my God knows. Hey. Your brother is the inspector general of police. And you were coming from whom? To the city. And policemen arrested you and took you to a police station you call your brother and say i am in police station he said i know yes i know I, I, is it not that a police station i am aware how will you be in the police station <laughs> you'll be very peaceful whatever is in fact whatever the police people are talking about you won't bother again because my brother is their leader my brother knows I, I, I know that I'm coming out from this place. My brother is aware I'm here. I'm just giving, whatever is delaying him, he will come because my brother, he, I, the, 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 do you know how he loves me? He will never allow me to be in police station. If any person slaps me here, he's in trouble. I would tell my brother, and that person will be in trouble. Tell them that it's your brother that is Inspector General. Let them be honoring you there. Praise the Lord. It's your God. Your God is aware. Whatever Satan is doing, your God is aware. Whatever enemies are doing in your life, your God is aware. Whatever affliction you are passing through, your God is aware. Whatever trouble, is he not the one that said he would deliver you from six troubles and from seven nothing shall hurt you he will deliver you from that trouble be peaceful he knows he knows in ezekiel chapter 37 ezekiel chapter 37 i read from verse 2 and caused me to pass by them round about and behold there were very many in the open valley and lo they were very dry and he said unto me son of man can these bones live let's answer him together one two go and i answered O oh lord god thou knowest hey, this matter i said be peaceful I say be peaceful. Yeah. Let 
let God be asking me my servant can this woman be healed I say you know <laughs> you know simple so God knows everything he knows what to do he has the plan that's why he said to him in verse 4 again he said unto me prophesy upon these bones and say unto them oh ye dry bones hear the word of the lord thus saith the lord god unto these bones behold i will cause breath to enter into you and ye shall live did god not know that they were dry bones did god not know that they were many did god not know that they are in the, in the valley he knows what to do god knows that your bones are dry god knows that your troubles are many god knows that you're in the valley you can't come out but he knows what to do amen Amen. Amen. When the mother of Jesus turned to him and said, during the wedding, and said, they have no wine. <laughs> Jesus knew what he would do. Because he knew that there was no wine. Before Jesus came to that place, the Holy Ghost must have communicated to him that, where you are going now, there will be time that there will be no wine. And the God will start your miracles from there. God. And so he knew what was going to happen. No, God knows your case. Be peaceful. Turn to your brother and to your sister. God knows your case. Be peaceful. Receive it from your brother. Receive it from your sister. I will be peaceful because God knows about my case. Thank you. In the book of Joshua, chapter 22. Joshua. Chapter 22. I read verse 22. the lord god of gods the lord god of gods he knew it and israel shall know if it be in rebellion of it or if in transgression against the lord save us not this day the children of reuben the children of god and half tribe of manasseh were returning after the battle and the settlement of their brethren to go to their land which is beyond Jordan the other side of Jordan but when they came to the river Jordan they thought a, 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 a thought came into them let us build the type of altar that is built or was built inside the land inside inside the land of canaan where our brethren are so that tomorrow in many years to come if the children of israel come to reject our children and say because they are not in this side jordan in the land of canaan where god promises people but because of our cattle we chose before jordan if they come to reject our children our children will show them the pattern of the altar that was built over there in the land of canaan which is built here now in the river jordan that we are of the stock of israel our fathers built this to show you that 
as was built over there in the hinterland so is built here we are one but the story went differently to the children of israel that the tribe of reuben the tribe of god and tribe half tribe of manasseh have turned away to other gods and have built them a strange altar to another god so they prepared for war to wipe them out so when they sent messengers to come and check up this they said why have you suddenly turned from the lord you want god's anger upon us they said the lord god of gods knows the lord god of god knows and he will make israel to know that we have not sinned i want you to be peaceful see this is a clear accusation it is so much it is so clear in fact it, it seems to have an element of truth because the lord had warned them not to build the altar in other places but the place in a, in a place why have they built the altar in this place is it not for other gods they say no god was the one that signified it in our hearts to do this we are confident in this one thing that god knows that we have not offended him we are confident and God shall make the children of Israel to know. So why are you troubled? Eh, they say I am a witch. If you are not a witch, trust in this God. He knows. He shall make people know it. Just be peaceful. Just be praying to him. Your, your righteousness shall come like the lie. Your judgment shall come like the noonday. Yeah. It's like when the sun is shining, you see clearly. They shall know the truth about your life. Clearly that you are guiltless in that matter. Look at it in the book of Psalm 37. Psalm 37. God knows. Have confidence in the God that knows. Believe in the God that knows. Wait for the God that knows. He would deliver you. Verse 4 to verse 7. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass verse 6 let's read it together one two go and he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light and thy judgment as the noon day hallelujah now people can, are not seeing your righteousness leave it to god who knows he will bring it out clear as when light is shining and you see everywhere the truth you are speaking about yourself the lord shall justify you and it shall be clear as when the act the place is clear the environment is clear and plain because the sun is in the sky shining so why are you troubled the lord the god of gods he knows the lord the god of gods he knows your problem is you don't want to suffer at all that's your problem otherwise commit your way to the lord he shall bring forth your righteousness yes it is good to comfort yourself with the fact that god knows everything concerning you from the beginning in John chapter 1 verse 45 to 50 John chapter 1 
verse 45 to 50. Philip findeth Nathanael and said unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip said unto him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. Nathanael said unto him, Whence knowest thou me? Jesus answered and said unto him, Before that Philip called thee, when thou was under the fig tree, I saw thee. Wonderful. Nathanael answered and said unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God, thou art the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said unto him, Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, believest thou? Thou shalt see greater things than this. See, before, not, before Philip called you, I have known you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I have known you. Is that not joy? That's what I'm speaking about. I knew your life in the past. That's why I am saying what I am saying. Before Philip called you, when you were standing under the tree, he had just come. Who told Jesus that he was standing under the tree? God shot everything in the past. He shot him to Jesus because he was man. But with the presence of the Holy Spirit in him communicated this knowledge unto him. Before you were born, you, before you were born into that tribe, I know you. Ha! Ah, wonderful. You knew me. Then why are you regretting for being born into that tribe? Why? God knew. If God knew that that tribe could not contain you, should, could you have been born there? Why are you not happy with your tribe? Why are you thinking another tribe is better than you? Before you were born into Africa, I know you. Why do you think Africa is not a good place? A place God in his judgment and wisdom felt you should be born there is there any better place if you will leave Africa to another continent is because maybe God asks you to go there for some benefit but for real life is in Africa where you were born or oh, is in Asia if you are an Asian or oh, is in Europe if you are a European or it's in America if you are an American so I want you to honor where you are believer because God saw that you will be born there in your tribe before you took decision to come to the capital city of Nigeria Abuja I was aware Eh? you were aware wonderful I was aware so you who are now in Abuja I'm talking about child of God why don't you feel peaceful when God said he was aware I'm talking about a child of God could he not have stopped you if you were coming to die in Abuja could he not have stopped you if you were coming for any other thing not glorifying his will? If you know this, the, you will say, the God who brought me to Abuja or allowed me to come to Abuja 
will find work for me in this place he will take care of me in this place amen, amen. yes he knows should not this God who knows all things about you who knows the crisis of your life have stopped that crisis from happening in your life that's the question should not this God who knows think this thought in your life it, you will calm down your fear will disappear should not this God who knows that your husband will die at a time like this before the man die and he knows that you are the wife to the man you are a daughter to the living god and god has said surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life and you will dwell in the house of the lord forever and this god who knows this knows also that your husband would die never stopped him but allowed him to die and the scripture also has said for we know that all things work together for good to them that love god to them who are the called according to his purpose should you not therefore say the date of my husband has something good in life for me otherwise he would have never died for god knows that he would die he would have stopped him from dying i will be peaceful say to the righteous man it shall be well with him there shall be i shall be i shall have it well with my future because god knows and yet God allowed it. Amen. See example. In the case. Of Lazarus. In the book of John chapter 11. Verse 1 to 7. John chapter 11. Verse 1 to 7. Now, a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary, and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus had that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of the Lord, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Take care, before Lazarus died, Jesus had received the information that he was sick. And Jesus has said, The sickness was not unto death but that for jesus to be glorified not unto death lazarus will not disappear from the earth no the son of jesus the son of god must be glorified in the sickness of lazarus lazarus you are feeling pain but the information has reached jesus that you are sick your lover information has reached him that you are sick huh. now jesus loved Martha and her sister and lazarus 
I'm talking about you. Information has reached God of the crisis you are facing. And this God loves you. In fact, he loves your family. He has gotten information of what Satan is planning. Since he, he, he knows, be peaceful. Whatever delay, listen to what happened. Verse, five, verse 6. When he had had there for that, he was sick. He abode two days still in the same place where he was. Is that not your the problem? Is that God has not come? That's where your problem is. Your problem is that God has not delayed. God has delayed. That's what your problem is. It's you saying he has delayed. But to him, there is a reason that he has not come immediately. But he shall come. The vision is yet for an appointed time. At the end, he shall speak and not lie. Though he tarry, wait for it. It shall surely come and it shall not tarry. Amen. Amen. He abode there two days. And after that, said he to his disciples, Let us go into Judea again. Verse 11. This thing said he, and after that, he said unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep you think that god has delayed and the matter has gone worse he knows that the matter will go worse it has now gone to death they have not sent to him that lazarus had died all that they sent to him was lazarus was sick but he knew lazarus had died and that was the appropriate time for him to be there and do something not only to make Lazarus come back to life and being healthy but to make the case of Lazarus a testimony in the world to all generations God is planning to exalt his name over your case hmm you know when ants are disturbing your house or let's say ants were disturbing the house of one particular man and he has fleet shelters to fleet on them so they should die so what he decided to do was to put sugar in the house to gather all the ants there so that he will handle them in one point and clear them either poor kerosene in, around there and all of them will die so as he saw them one will move he kept quiet let them go let them gather around the sugar he saw one there he saw two he saw five he saw ten he didn't do anything God has not done anything about your case. He wants the enemies to gather together. <laughs> okay. Amen. Praise the Lord. So that when he strikes at them, all of them will fall. you will live in peace forever Amen. be patient wait for him he knows Amen. Amen. so that's what happened in verse 11 verse 11 the scripture says these things said he and afterward and after 
after that he said unto them our friend Lazarus sleepeth but I go that I may awake him out of sleep then said his disciples Lord if he sleepeth he shall do well in verse 14 then said Jesus unto them Lazarus is dead and I am glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent ye may believe nevertheless let us go on to him the disciples still have some doubts and Jesus wanted Lazarus case to settle their doubts that is why he treated it that way he delayed okay let's go verse 20 then Martha as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming went and met him but Mary sat in the house then said Martha unto Jesus Lord if thou hast been here my brother had not died but I know that even now whatsoever thou would ask of God God will give it to thee Jesus said unto her thy brother shall rise again now let's continue in verse 29 as soon as she had that she arose quickly and came unto him now Jesus was not yet come into the town but was in that place where Martha met him let's read verse 32 then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him she fell down at his feet saying unto him Lord if thou hast been here my brother had not died when Jesus therefore saw her weeping and the Jews also weeping which came with her he groaned in his spirit and was troubled and said where have you laid him they said unto him Lord come and see Jesus where Jesus well now let's read verse 37 together one two go and some of them said could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died child of God people are saying where is your God because of the crisis you are going through couldn't God have saved you God wants to do more than that if God or if Jesus had come and saved Lazarus healed Lazarus will the Jews be gathered in that house I say God's thought is not man's thought God is concerned with his glory while you are concerned with your pain <laughs> why don't you give God his time why don't you allow your pain to glorify the name of the Lord that is it yeah they said it right but Jesus was going to do more Jesus therefore again groaning in himself came to the grave it was a cave and a stone lay upon it a stone lay upon it Jesus said take ye away the stone Martha the sister of him that was dead said unto him Lord by this time he stinketh, for he had been dead four days. Jesus said unto her, Said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God? Jesus said, 
Did I not tell you that if you would believe me in your trouble, I would deliver you from six troubles, from seven, nothing will hurt you. Did I not tell you that if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth? Did not my word say, the just shall live by faith? Why are you bothering about impossibility? Is not God in the delay? Did he not purposely stay two days before he came? Did he not? Trust in your God. He is the God of yesterday and is the God of today. He didn't do it yesterday. He would do it today. He is the God of tomorrow. He didn't do it today. Tomorrow he shall do it in your life. So be peaceful. Just God knows. And he will do something about it. Yes. Then they took away the storm from the place where the dead laid and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said father I thank thee that thou hast hurt me I've settled this matter with you in prayer before I came here and you have hurt me already I am moved to share a testimony with you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Something happened today. If they are connected hearing me now, they will know that their case has come in here for a testimony. This morning, I received a call from America because our beloved Pastor Senator Emmanuel Boacha and his wife and Mommy Linda were sent to America for a program that finished yesterday. Amen. And they will be coming from there to meet me in London this week. <laughs> Hallelujah. They call me in haste, in tension, that they were rushing our beloved Pastor Emmanuel Boacha to the hospital. They were rushing him because he woke up with a sharp pain on his chest. So I asked this, I, I asked his wife. The wife was saying, My husband woke up this morning and said, yeah, it's sharp pain. The, pastor himself Emmanuel Boacha said I woke up this morning sharp pain I could not be here I thought it would go in it was not going so I said they should carry me to hospital so they were preparing to they were getting ready the vehicle to carry him to hospital I said are you inside the vehicle already he said no we are going to enter the vehicle okay balance up for prayer hallelujah <laughs> hallelujah <laughs> Amen. So we went into prayer. And I told God to heal him. Amen. Amen. And I told Satan to leave that place. So when I finished the prayer, I told them the matter has settled. 
there is no fear anymore so they entered the vehicle and were going to hospital thank god the hospital was long enough the distance was long enough so as they went emmanuel butcher said the pain left him so he said why am i going to hospital again <laughs> hallelujah so they returned back everybody said they returned back because the sickness has gone amen before that sickness came god knew it would come and god also knew what would happen he knew who would heal the sickness and they call the person that God prepared and the sickness is gone yes praise the Lord I want you to know that God knows about the trouble he knows about the affliction of your life and has prepared a way out there is no temptation taking you by such as is common to man but God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted above the level you can bear but with the same temptation he will make a way for you to escape from it you will come out of that trouble God is aware and he's doing something about it are you happy yes, you know i told you i'll be speaking to you three things but maybe i was too slow today i'm counting the thing one by one so i'm counting to children to understand so i will just stop on point one god knows next time i will talk to you on god did it then I will talk to you on God allows it. You will settle. You will go and sleep. <laughs> yeah. Don't trouble yourself. Our God is aware. So, that is what Jesus prayed. I knew that thou hearest me always. But because of these people who stand by, I set it. That they may believe that thou hast sent me and when he does had spoken he cried with a loud voice lazarus come forth and he that was dead came forth bound hand and foot with grave clothes and his face was bound about with a napkin jesus said unto them loose him and let him go hallelujah how many people were with jesus in that place uncountable and jesus said because of these people that are standing i delayed coming when he was sick i didn't come because nobody will be visiting will be around but now lord he is dead and crowds have gathered i'm so excited do it that they may know that you sent me that these people standing may believe in me that's why i say may god use your case to announce his name to the world yes then many of the jews that came to mary and have seen this thing who jesus did what did they do they believed on him many the wisdom of god can you wave at him 
the wisdom of God. He doeth all things to his glory. Be patient and wait for him. He will visit you at the time of his glory. Your name shall be announced to all the world. You, your name shall give God glory. Your situation shall give God glory. You will be rewarded in heaven because of your patience. The Lord shall give you a special gift and say, this gift is given to you because of that crisis that came in your life and you were patient enough and waited for me to glorify my name and my name was glorified and people believed in me this is your gift yes that is how it is that is how God does it yes the one that knows about the crisis in your life loves you so much if you know this you will not be worried be worried for nothing but in in everything by prayer and supplication let your requests be made known unto god and the god of peace shall keep your hearts and mine in Christ Jesus he knows he knows about the crisis in your life the one that loves you so much if you know this you will be peaceful in your crisis in Psalm 27 verse 1 to 3 Psalm 27 verse 1 to verse 3 the Bible says the Lord is my light and my salvation whom shall I fear the Lord is the strength of my life of whom shall I be afraid when the wicked even mine enemies and my foes come upon me to eat up my flesh what will happen to them they stumbled and fell though and host should encamp against me my heart shall not fear though war should rise against me in this will I be confident I will not be shaking because my God is aware my God is with me my lover is with me I'm not going to be afraid of Boko Haram I'm not going to be afraid of witches and wizards even this dream that I dreamed now I won't bother about it because he knows about the dream even before I, I did I not dream that I died? Did I not dream that somebody shot me? Did I not, I, did not my God know that, know that I shall dream that I die on Tuesday? <laughs> did he not know that uh, in the month of November, I was going to dream that uh, they surrounded me? Did uh, he knows all those things? And he knows it meant nothing. That's why he brought me to the month of December peacefully. And that dream meant nothing. Because God is with me. He's going to take care of me. Whatever this my enemy is talking, what they are saying in the village, what they are saying in the town, my God had it. He has had. So what's my problem about it? I'm peaceful. I say all those void noise will come to, to come to an end. Like the rain that threatened the crusade yesterday. Didn't God know that we we're going to have a crusade? Didn't he know that I'm coming to preach there? Didn't he know that people were going to be born, to be born again that, that yesterday? He knows. So allow the rain to, to threaten, but it shall not come. I say God will take care. Those things threatening your life. Because God will take care. They shall not come. It shall not happen. Yes. That's what the Lord told the king uh, Uzziah. He said, all the noise the king of Syria is making. He is in confederacy with the king of Samaria. There is all those straight fear not it shall not come it shall not happen he told hezekiah the king of assyria Sennacherib, shall not shoot an arrow into this city he shall not cast a bang at it the way he came the way he shall go i am with you to deliver this city and it happened it happened one day an angel went and 185 soldiers chosen men chosen one died and the king of the city left and they never came again
God will settle those things. Ah. That's why you should know and fear nothing. In Isaiah chapter 43, verse 1 to verse 3. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 1 to verse 3. The Bible tells you clearly the voice of the Lord. But now, thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel. Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. Do you believe? Believe it. If you know that God knows of this problem, of this trouble, of this affliction, before it arose against you, then hold to his promises in prayer, faith, and confession for your salvation according to his love and faithfulness. Call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver thee and thou shalt glorify my name. For I know the thoughts I think toward you, talk of peace and not of evil, to give you the desire of your heart, to give you the expected end. Then ye shall go and pray unto me, when ye shall go and call unto me and I will hearken unto your life. That's what God is saying. All you need, now that he knows, let him be, be, be talking to him bring your worries to him bring your anxiety to him bring your fear unto him and wait you will come out you will come out the lord shall send his angels and they shall remove you from that place daniel said oh king live forever the Lord has sent his angel because he knew, I was, he knew I was in the lion's den. He knew I would end up in the lion's den. He sent his angels and closed up the mouth of the lions before I came here. And as uh, one, sing, one musician sang it, he said, Daniel made one of the lions his pillow. God has settled that matter. Just be clapping hand for God. He has settled it. He has settled it. He has settled it. <laughs> settle it. Settle it. Settle it. Settle it. Settle it. Rise up upon your feet. The Lord has settled that matter. I'm telling you, be peaceful. He knows everything. He has planned for your good. He has planned for don't allow fear to rule your heart. Don't allow fear. Don't say to that problem, my God has settled everything about you. My God has settled it. He has settled it. He knows that you are not married yet. He knows that you have not gotten a child. He knows that your husband has died. He knows that your wife has died. He knows you want to go to school. He knows that you need a job. He knows. Hallelujah. All you need to do is be a child of God. And let your name be in the register of those God has, found to, has decided to care for. Once have I sown to David, my message shall not depart from him. I will not fail him. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, the Lord knows. My God is aware. My sister, God knows. He's doing something about it. Ah, Jesus. Hallelujah. God knows. God knows.
Jesus name we pray I know he loves me better whatsoever may be I will follow him I'll follow him Follow him. Wait upon the Lord, he will do it. I know God loves me the best. Whatsoever may be, I will trust on him, trust on him. <laughs> Worship. Follow Jesus. You know he loves you better, whatsoever may be. Keep on trusting him, trust in him. Worship the Lord. Follow Jesus. We know. He loves us the best, whatsoever we be. We will trust on Him, trust on Jesus. Trust on Jesus. You love him so much, whatsoever may be, you should call on him, call on Jesus. Worship. Hallelujah. Follow Jesus. Hey, God knows I love Him holy, whatsoever may be. I will trust on Him, trust on Jesus. Keep on, keep on trusting. up your hands before this God that knows you and you know <laughs> you know he knows you know he knows that you are sincere you know he knows that truly you are his own you who are not yet I give you a chance to tell God today I join you open your mouth and tell him today I believe in Jesus today I surrender Today I'm for you now because ha huh, I want you to guide my life. I want you to take care of my life. Huh? God knows. Sister, he's aware. He will take care of you. My brother, God is aware. That you have not yet married, he's aware. He will settle that matter. He will reward you with a wife that he chooses. Thank you, Jesus bless God thank you I'm so grateful I'm so thankful the Lord knows that you the Lord knows that you know that he loves you thank you 
In Jesus name we pray yeah. Almighty Father here are your children raising up their hands unto you because they know that you know they know that you know about their situations about their crisis about their family situation about the church what is happening there about the society about the nation you know and because you know with your good and precious promises it shall be well with them your word says say unto the righteous it shall be well with him it shall be well with her i therefore say to you in crisis and troubles of life my god has said it shall be well with you as the lord brought the children of israel out of egypt certainly the lord is bringing you out of crisis in jesus name we pray